Uh, Dr. Fizz here on a theoretical analysis of Faraday's Law. Faraday's Law is given here where you're looking at an integral around a closed path where E is dotted with the DL, where DL is the direction along the path, the arc length, and that's going to be equal to minus the derivative of the magnetic flux through that path. So there's an area that that path defines and if the magnetic field is constant we uh, take B times A assuming that B pierces the area that is perpendicular to the area. So that is Faraday's law. We're going to see how we might derive that law in part. Well we start out here with a magnetic field into the page. And this magnetic field into the page will be used in conjunction with a wire, a rectangular wire that I pull to the right. I have a sample charge on the west side, the north side, the east, and the south. When you use the V cross B formula, V is to the right, B is into the page, V cross B is up. So this charge will experience an upward force which will move in the wire. This charge will experience an upward force that wants to pop it off the wire. And same down here. And over here, since there's no B, there is no force. This is the key one over here on the left. This will generate a clockwise current. Whenever you have a current, you can say there's an electric field that's pushing the charge. Uh, notice we have L as the distance there where the magnetic field is present and over here it's not and W is the width of the rectangular wire. So we come over uh, to this next part and we see that QVB can be associated with QE because when you have charge moving in a wire we can look at that as an electric field that's been set up to push the charge. So we are generating electric field by this experiment that we're doing. So we have QVB is equal to QE. E must be associated with VB. Now what's that velocity dx dt? Well it's going to be negative dl dt because as you know you increase going to you know to the right dl decreases. So this velocity replaces the velocity here minus dl dt and we look at this uh, integral going around the loop. If we go around the loop we see that E dot dl will be giving us a contribution here because the electric field is up, dl is up. Here dl points to the right, E is up 90 degree angle, the dot product will give zero. Same here and over on this side there is no E so we are finished. This integral around this loop is going to give us E times the width. Alright let's put this together. If we put this together we have E integrated with the DL around the loop is minus DL times B because that is what E is and then W is placed to the right. Now what we can do here is we can say well um, let's put the W inside the derivative it's constant but in general we might be pu pulling this wire up and there would be a DW DT so that's that's good that we have that inside and L times W is the area where the magnetic field lines pierce. So that's the definition of the flux LW times B. So let's look at that down here and if we look at LW the area dA dt if we bring the B inside we have then the flux the change of the flux and we have our final form. You might say well you shouldn't really bring the B in because suppose B changes then it won't be a constant. Well it turns out experimentally that that you get the same results so really you want the B on the inside so I'm not really deriving that part but it, it suggests 
it's suggesting that that might be the case. So there you have it. There's Faraday's law, derived, sort of. And so far we have the four equations and the Lorentz force equation. We need to add one more piece here, thanks to Maxwell, and we will be finished.